Deborah Bakewell is living proof that research saves lives. In 2010, she had a pioneering transplant, only made possible thanks to research funded directly by money donated to Kidney Research UK. I was diagnosed in my mid-twenties that I had a kidney problem. And over the years it, it progressed, but very, very slowly. So I didn't actually realise how poorly I was getting until about my sort of late forties. And then all of a sudden it's like hitting a brick wall and th there was no ifs or buts. My kidney function was such that it, I wouldn't you know, live beyond 55 if I wasn't careful. In 2008, Deborah began a gruelling routine of dialysis for nine hours, six nights a week, while she waited for a kidney to become available. Then she got the call she'd been waiting for. I used to be on absolute uh, tenterhooks. Whenever the phone rang, that was it. It would be a, f a fight to get to the phone first. And when you get that call, in instantly, pardon? You know, is it? Your heart's in your mouth. Well, we had developed the technique over a number of years in the laboratory, and in fact, we had done so experimental work on more than about 500 kidneys uh, before we thought we were ready to actually do a kidney transplant in a, in a patient. Fantastic. The results improve year on year. When the professor was, was explaining about the, the new um, research and he said, oh, by the way, you know, it's never been tried anywhere, I thought immediately, you know, for probably a split second, I thought, oh, gosh, I'm going to be a guinea pig here. Then I thought, what have I got to lose? You know... <laughs> Nine hours a night, six nights a week, not much of a life really. I then thought, right, let's go for it. Deborah was the first person in the world to be given a previously rejected kidney, which was then revived using a new technique called normothermic perfusion. The research team, led by Professor Mike Nicholson at Leicester General Hospital, had made a breakthrough. So normally, kidney transplants are stored in ice, in an ice box. And that's a good and simple method of storage, but it is limited by time. So what we've been doing is taking kidneys at the end of their period of cold storage and then giving them this new treatment called normothermic perfusion. What we do is we circulate blood through the kidney and the blood is warmed to normal body temperature, so the kidney warms up. The second thing is the blood is very oxygen rich which means the kidney can replenish the stores of the, this cellular energy package, the ATP molecules. And then the third thing is there are some goodies in the blood that we add that preserve the kidney and, and we hope help it function better when it's transplanted. Deborah's transplant was a success. She got her life back. Wrong to life. Where is it gonna go? <laughs> The freedom, the absolute freedom the uh, kidney transplant has given me. You know, I have a normal life, I can go away for weekends. I, I have um, both my uh, um, step-granddaughters and we do an awful lot of, of playing. Trickle, trickle, little star. And the thing is, I could never ever have done that. I would never have had the energy, but I can now. There is a big mismatch between the demand for kidneys and the supply of them. 90% of the uh, transplant waiting list is patients requiring kidneys. One of the main advantages of this technique is that we may be able to increase the transplant rate by using it. The more funding we receive, the more research we can do and the more lives we can save. Every day in the UK, someone dies waiting for a kidney transplant. You do feel guilty that you were lucky and somebody else isn't. It's a bit like you know winning the lottery. I've won the lottery. I've hit the jackpot, but somebody else is still buying the ticket. And you know I just feel so sorry that um, you know people are still in that position. And what's more, young young people are still in that position. Mm -hmm.